Okay, welcome to these videos on how to do instrumental perspectives. Um, so we're going to start off looking at um, an instrumental perspective. We'll start off looking at a good one, um, and then we'll see a couple of easy to make errors that we'll be referring back to in the videos. Okay, so this is an example of an instrumental perspective. Um, so what we have over here is the elevation of our chair. Then we have up the top the plan view of the chair, so looking down on it, and it's been rotated to a 45 degree angle. Uh, and that projects down, and we end up with a projected um, 3D perspective drawing in the center here. And that's what we're going to end up with, that's what we're looking for. Yes, it is very slow. Okay, so we're going to learn about all these things like picture plane, horizon line, viewpoints, viewpoints, stationary, point, ground lines. All of these things we're going to learn about. Um, but first of all, we're just going to see this drawing <coughs> with a few minor changes. Um, and we're going to see what those changes can, uh, can wreak, what kind of havoc they can wreak on our... Um, drawing. So first of all, this one here. Um, now this happens when our stationary point is too close to the object. So up here we've got our stationary point. If we go back to our original, you see my stationary point is actually down here. Um, so stationary point moves up and we end up with this distorted view. Now this is very similar so when we've got a two-point perspective um, with short um, or with uh, the points too close together. So here you'll see points close together, we get that distortion. Points nice and far apart, we don't get that distortion. Um, so very similar uh, kind of principle. The, the vanishing points end up um, is very close together because the stationary point is so close to the original plan view. Um, you can see here, if we go to this guy again, the stationary point has been moved back. As a result, the viewpoints have moved outward, but we've still got a bit of a distortion. Um, so we're going to look to um, get away from that, and we're going to end up with something like that. So you can see the stationary point very far away from the original plan, and the viewpoints as a consequence um, are nice and far apart, and we get a nice and in perspective. Um, view. Okay, um, so what we're going to discuss first of all are the objects that we're going to be drawing. So this can be an everyday object. Um, in this case, most of you are going to be drawing your batch, your batch house. Um, and what we need is we need um, a few views. So first of all, we need the elevation. Now, in this example, we're just going to be drawing something quite simple. Um, we're not going to be drawing a whole house. We're just going to be teaching the principles of the process. Um, so we've chosen quite a simple object, uh, and this is it in here. This is an isometric of the object, just a series of steps. Um, and when we're talking about elevation, which is the view that we need to start off our instrumental perspective, 
uh, we're talking about side elevation and that looks like that. That is the side elevation of that object. Um, so we need the side elevation. We also need the plan view. Okay, so that's the side elevation view. Uh, the plan view is looking down from the top. Uh, it's going to look something like that. Okay, so we need both of those views and we're going to build those up in Illustrator. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to use Illustrator to build up our views, the elevation and, sorry, the elevation and plan view. Um, so, elevation plan view. Elevation is the side view. I'm just going to draw in a rectangle. That's going to be my bottom step. Um, I need to give it, make sure it's got a um, stroke color. So that's black. That should be good. Now, Illustrator allows us to be accurate, and we should be accurate. Um, so what I can do is I can just draw in a rectangle like so, and then come up to the width and height sections of Illustrator and type in those accurate measurements. So it's actually 120 uh, long by 30 millimeters high. And I'm just going to copy and paste that, Control C, Control V, and stack one on top of the other. Then I'm going to reduce that down to 90. And move that along. Control C, Control V, stack that on top again and reduce that down to 60. Now, if you're not getting these little helpful green um, lines, what you can do is you can explore the view menu and in there, I believe under guides, we've got, no, 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 where is it? Smart guides, ah, oh, it's right below guides. Smart guides, we wanna tick that box, we'll tick that option, um, and that will bring up these nice green smart guides which will help us build our steps. So there's my elevation view. I'm just gonna move that to the side and I'm gonna create the plan view next. Okay, so there's my plan view. I created it um, using the same methodology, uh, just using my rectangle tool and inserting a rectangle and coming up to width and height, getting that nice and accurate. Um, okay, now one thing that's advantageous with using the computer is um, if I mess something up, I don't have to redo the whole thing, but also what I can do is I can scale these things because um, they're a little bit too big for my A3 page. If you're drawing something more complicated like a house, you might even go up to A2 page. Um, I'm gonna stick with A3 because it's quite simple, quite small, but I'm gonna scale these to a one to two scale uh, just by reducing um, them using the scale tool. So I'll do this one first. You can do them at the same time, but I'll just do this one first. So I've got the scale tool. When I double click on a scale tool or the rotate tool or any of those tools that are used to transform things, it brings up this dialog box that allows me to uh, type numbers in instead of just using my mouse. So I can scale it to half the size or a one to two scale very easily. Yep, and I can do the same thing again. So I just Double clicked on the scale tool, 50%, that's what I want. And that is now at one to two scale, it's nice and easy. Uh, what I'm also gonna do is a good idea, because they're all separate little parts, separate from one another, I'm gonna group them together. So select and control G, or you can come to object and group. Select and control G. Now when I select one object, I select all three. Okay, so what we're up to next is our reference lines. We're gonna draw in the lines that we saw uh, in our example. Um, so first, well, I'm just gonna move that up and move that out to the side. So first of our reference lines, let's have a look. Okay, so we're drawing in the picture plane line. So I'm just gonna use the line tool and I'm gonna draw in a line like so. Um, making sure it's got a stroke color. In this case, I'm just gonna double click on that stroke color and make it red. Easy peasy. Um, you can also change the stroke width or weight, I should say, in here, um, should you want to as well. I'm just gonna leave it as one point, that's fine for me. So there is my picture plane, um, and we'll discuss more about what that actually is. 
once we've got everything on the page. So picture plane, next up we're after horizon line. Um, so horizon line I'm going to put in here. There we go, and we want to make that a nice yellow color. So I'll tell you what, I can use my eyedropper tool, get that color, and then switch that into the stroke. It's not exactly easy to see. I might make that a bit of a dark yellow, make it a nice mustardy color. Much better. Okay, so <clears throat> we've got our picture plane and our horizon line in there. Uh, next up, we have too far ground line now your ground line is wherever your elevation is so I'm gonna put my elevation about two-thirds of the way down the page uh, and my ground line comes off it so my ground line next to my helpful green uh, smart guides um, so I can make that nice dark green okay so there's my ground line um, and that lines up with my elevation, my side elevation. And then we've got our stationary point. Now our stationary point um, is an interesting one. So how we're going to draw this in, or how I suggest we draw this in, is I'm going to use the pen tool for this. And I'm just going to click up here, hold down shift so I get a nice straight line. Uh, click down here we want nice long lines and then click all the way over here should be an L um, and it shouldn't have any fill color you can see mine's got a white fill that's why um, it's kind of obscuring obscuring what's behind it so I'm just going to default fill and stroke and then select the fill color and click on that little red cross um, which means that it will get rid of the fill color so now it's just lines uh, so what I'm going to do remember if I double click on the rotate tool or any of those tools double click brings up the dialog box I'm going to rotate that to 45 degrees yep. um, and why that hasn't rotated I'm not 100% sure let's try that once more so I've got you selected double click and there we go that's rotated right so what we want to do is our stationary point is where we are standing. Yeah, so you can think of it as standing point, stationary point, um, and it is where we are viewing the object from. So there's a little guy, plan view, and he's looking at this shape. Okay, now you want to put your stationary point in a nice logical place. Now, where our stationary point um, intersects the picture plane, that's this line here, we are going to project down from that picture plane onto our horizon line, and those are going to be our vanishing points. So where it intersects the picture plane, those are going to be our vanishing points. They're going to be that far apart from each other. So usually, the further apart you can get those, the happier you will be. So still keeping obviously your stationary point on the page yep so that's the balance you want to find stationary point still on the page but vanishing points are going to be nice and far apart okay so stationary point is in there um, and we'll just leave it there for the moment um, I just need to figure out where we're going next okay a good thing to do at this stage, we're going to figure out where our VP points are. So I'm just going to bring that down straight line, down to inset with the horizon line, down to inset with the horizon line. And those points there, right there, and right there, those are going to be our vanishing points. Yep, those are the lines, like in our two point perspective, that we're going to be drawing back to and our lines are going to be converging on. Okay, so what we're going to talk about now is we're just going to revisit our stationary point as well as our horizon line and what they do and what they're for. So at the moment, this is where I'm standing and this is the view of my object. So if I take this into a 3D environment, 
this is what I'm looking at. It's not exactly the best shot to be looking at in terms of getting an idea of what's going on um, and what this object actually is. So what we can do is we can't kind of move our stationary point, uh, we can't rotate that around. So what we do is we actually rotate our uh, plan view around. So I'm going to rotate that to 45 degrees. You can choose to rotate it either to 45 degrees or to rotate it to a 30, 60 uh, angle. Um, it is up to you. So I'm going to rotate it to 45 and we'll make it negative 45 on the other side. And then click OK. Now, when you're picking your, um, your rotation, it's important to think about your object and how you want to view your object, where the detail is, what the best view um, for expressing your idea and communicating your idea, what that is. That's the important decision. Okay, so flipping back, now I'm kind of looking at my object like this. This is a little bit better. Um, but what the horizon line, and that is this one here, what the horizon line does is it picks where vertically your eye is positioned. So if our horizon line is up above our elevation, which is this one over here, yeah, which is this view here, if it is above it, um, or just above it, say it's on that, we are, we are seeing just maybe a tiny little bit of the top. Just a tiny little bit. As we move it up, we are getting more and more elevation and more and more of that top view. So you need to think about, again, what kind of um, detail you're trying to show and what kind of uh, what kind of view would best sell and explain your object or your batch whatever you're drawing okay what we're going to talk about next is we're going to talk about where we are going to put our rotated plan view uh, we've got a few choices. We can have it above the picture plane. That is this line here. So it can go above. It can go touching. Um, so just kind of touching on, or it can go kind of halfway through, or it could go below. Okay, so we're going to show an example of what we're talking about there. So here we have a desk, so nice and detailed. We've got a horizon line a decent distance up from the elevation, which is what gives us our position looking down on the desk. Um, but what we're really interested in is this plan view and where it is in relation to the picture plane. So you can see it touches on the picture plane, but most of it is, or all the rest of it is above the picture plane. And we get this projection as a result. Now I'm just going to show you one other example. Now this one, the plan view is below the picture plane and we get a much larger projection as a result. And when we've got this much detail to show, the larger projection does a much better job of communicating that detail. Yeah, It's a much better choice. So here, this is a smaller result, and it's come from the position of the plan view above the picture plane. This is the plan view below the picture plane, and we end up with a slightly enlarged um, perspective view as a result.